Hey, everybody, who's here? Have we got anybody? Yeah, yeah. Nobody yet. So I'll hang out. Mr. Rob and Mr. Scott, what's going on, guys? I think you guys are usually my first, usually. So thank you. Thank you for making the time to be with me, guys. Yep. I'm in the living room this time because my wife went over to a neighbor's house and got the kids in bed. So I just literally, I literally just got them in bed. So I'm in the living room where I can be alone. Yeah, Eclipse is in the house. What's going on, Mark? I got my drink. It's not in my can. This is still Coke Zero, though. I'm not like Seth. I don't have any tipsy talk or anything like that. This is not a tipsy cup. It's just a cup. And uh, it's got Coke Zero. That's my choice drink. Although I've been drinking Pepsi lately because I ran out of Coke Zero and my wife loves Pepsi, but she likes Sonic Ice. I don't know if I don't know if uh, you have that up there, Scott. Sonic burgers, drive-ins, that type of stuff. But uh, they got like the little tiny little pieces of ice and everybody loves them. Long Kings Landscaping. I feel like this is the first time I've seen you guys. Tell me where you're from. Tell me what's your name. It is. You said, you just said it's your first time in. Well, welcome, welcome. Yeah, tell me where you're from. No, Sonic. Uh, yeah, it's debatable whether or not you're missing out, but around here in Oklahoma, Sonic is a burger joint. It's probably the most popular burger joint. It's. I think there's more Sonics than there are McDonald's around here. I know you got McDonald's up there. And, uh, but their home office is here and they just got them everywhere. So everybody loves them. And they're kind of like the, the one-stop drink shop, uh, along with burgers and tots. They're known for their tots. So cool. Excellent. Yep. So I've got a list of things that I want to talk about tonight. But uh, if you guys got any ideas, just go ahead and put it in the comments and we can uh, we can kind of talk about those a little bit. But I'm going to open up with one thing particular and see uh, see where it goes. It might not go anywhere. That's happened a few times on the live. I'll have something planned and then I guess you guys just don't want to talk about it. And that's totally cool because you have joined the most irresponsible long care YouTube live channel that ever was because we're going to talk about anything. Okay, but if, when there's nothing to talk about, I got a little bit of a list. <sighs> yeah, Joffrey, what's going on, man? Yep, I watched that. Uh, I mean, I text you, you know that, but I, I, I watched that clip on on how all the farmers are having some trouble and about how the storm uh, that went through just complicated an already bad situation. So uh, if you guys think about uh, the the farmers that were affected by the storm, please, please pray for them because uh, uh from what I understand from the article, some of those farms are talking about shutting down. Uh, I would imagine permanently. Um, I don't. I imagine it's pretty hard to, to come back from something like that when you have losses like that. Okay, dokie, what's going on? I'm making you want to eat, Rob. Yeah, yep. See, Rob. Apparently, Rob is a uh, a Sonic fan, as are most people. Man, they're double cheeseburger. It's hard to beat that thing. It's really good. Really, really good. You think I... <laughs> that's my wife. My wife is on the live. <laughs> Everybody welcome Kristen. Kristen Clevenger. She says, I got a bat in the cave. Are you serious? Yeah. No, you're not serious. Oh, my gosh. Now I'm a little bit embarrassed because if you're watching, then so's Kat. And uh, yeah, a little bit embarrassing, but that's what you're for, right, babe? Yep, to come and embarrass me. Yep, 
It just got a whole new level of irresponsible, let me tell you. Okay, guys, I'm going to get started on it, but I want to start off with one thing because I don't want to forget this. I always want to uh, recognize uh, anybody that sends me anything, and I got something in the mail. I got it from uh, from Gun Landscaping. Most of you guys know Gun, so this is a pretty big honor to get something. He's from Noblesville, Indiana, and uh, he sent me a sticker, and he also sent me uh, a magnet. It's actually two magnets and two stickers, so I don't know which one I'm going to put up on the on the community cabinet because I like the magnets because, you know, if I ever got to readjust, I can do that. But, uh, but the sticker's bigger. So I, I think I'm going to end up putting a sticker on there, but you're going to get on the cabinet, uh, Mr. Mike Gunn. And I appreciate it. I know he's not in here, but he might watch this later. So I appreciate the sticker. And this is what he wrote. He said, Matt, I apologize for the delay. Hey man, I'm overdue on a lot of stickers. No excuses. Right. I know. Right. Keep up the great work uh, and fantastic content. Take care and uh, get it done, Mike Gunn. So, yeah, thank you, Mike. Thank you again. And if any of you guys uh, have not sent me a sticker yet or whatnot or want to do a sticker swap, I'd be more than happy to send you a sticker. But for some reason, that's just a hard thing to get out in a timely manner. But uh, you will get it, I promise. I just have to have a record to remind me uh, to get you on my list. So, sup, Kings? Jay and Christine, what's going on, guys? Yeah, I watched that, that last video of you guys uh, mowing your lawn that you hadn't mowed in over a month. And I believe that in Louisiana, with all the moisture you guys get, um, how that grass just grows. And that, that Ferris, man, that thing is a beast. It didn't look like it had any trouble whatsoever, but that was a job. That's like one of those jobs that I don't like. I really don't like doing overgrown lawns, overgrown lawns, but I know they make for great videos. And that was a great video. So I enjoyed watching it. Yep. There we go. Waiting on a storm. Yeah, see, I was just talking about how you guys get rain down there. And he said, waiting on another storm. I would love to have a storm. Let me tell you this. Here, here's, a, here's a topic. What are y'all's lawns looking like? Because in Oklahoma my lawns are starting to get burnt up. Like I'm, I felt a little bad for putting fertilizer on them because we're just not getting enough rain. And some of my lawns are a little burnt up and crispy and it is just kind of the time of year. And that's just the way it is. But what are y'all's lawns looking like? You know, are they green? I know it's different, uh, depending on where you're at, what kind of grass you got, but even our Bermuda that loves the heat and, uh, usually does pretty well in the drought is just, looking terrible. Yeah. Up there in Canada, it's looking green, huh? So what are your, what are your, uh, average temperatures up there, Scott? Are they, is it, is it in that growing season? Obviously it's in the growing season, otherwise it wouldn't be growing, but just to kind of give a frame of reference down here, cause we're in the, uh, uh right around the upper eighties to the low nineties during the day. And we're in about the upper sixties overnight. And that's one of the reasons why our Bermuda is not growing, uh, because it doesn't grow overnight. But then in the daytime, it gets the sunshine, but the days are shorter too. So what's that look like up there for your weather? And what kind of grass do you guys got? Let's see here, Long Kings. You guys are up in Ohio, huh? Um, uh, are you up there with uh, near uh, uh, Jesse James? You know what I'm talking about? Jesse James with Black Fork? Is it anywhere up there? Four inches of rain in June and July, plus multiple days in the mid nineties. That's, you know, down here, I don't know what, uh, whatever kind of grass you got up there in Ohio down here with that Bermuda, that's about right. They say that, that it's about one inch, uh, per week of water. And then it loves the nineties. Once it gets into the nineties, now when it goes over hundred, it's a little too much, but right there in those nineties, it works out pretty well. So that's kind of ideal down here in Oklahoma for the Bermuda, but does that work out for you guys up there in Ohio? 40 minutes south of us. Yeah, man. If you guys haven't hooked up, uh, you guys ought to hook up, do a little collaboration or something. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, Joffrey, he says uh, in their uh, mid Illinois that uh, it's green right now, but it's fixing to go dry. And I, and I remember some of your past videos when it gets dry. Yeah. That, that, uh, I think it's fescue that you have there. Uh, it's probably a mix, but, I, but you got that cool season grass and it does get kind of crispy. Um, but it greens up quick uh, for some reason our bermuda unless it has time to grow it doesn't green up super fast like we don't get rain and it's just green uh, it seems it kind of takes a little bit of time 
Mm -hmm. 30 Celsius. Okay. I, I'm not very good with, with, uh, with conversions, but 30 Celsius, um, let's see here. 32 is like zero. I think R32 is like your, so was that like right around six, mid 60s, Scott? Yeah, there's the answer to that, to that uh, in the uh, middle Illinois is the mix of fescue, rye, bluegrass, could be a mix. Uh, it could be just, uh, just straight, straight one grass, but it bounces back fast. Yeah, that's good, man. I wish, I wish ours did, but we're kind of towards the end of our growing season now though. So, um, we're not, I'm, I'm suspecting it's going to slow down quite a bit in the, in the next month or so. And I remember last October, we were pretty much shutting things down because me and Rob from Waymaker, we went out there and covered Ben and Karen while they were out on vacation. And there was a lot of lawns that we just didn't do. Uh, they just said, now we pass. Yep. Okie dokie. Same here, brother. Uh, the ones that are irrigated uh, and fertilized, they're kind of staying green. Uh, and uh, especially the ones that are irrigated. Um, but uh, if they're not irrigated, man, they're just getting crispy. 86. Well, Scott, I was way. Oops, wrong one. But I'll come back to it. Ours will take off next month or so when it gets cooler. Yeah. Yep. Ours is going to slow down. And Scott says uh, that 30 degrees Celsius is about 86 Fahrenheit. So I was way off on that. Uh, but that's a good temp. That's per that's perfect mowing. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Okay, guys. So we're we're about we're about 12 minutes into it. So I'm gonna uh, get into there into the the big question. Okay, because uh, me and Rob we were doing our collaboration project out at the church property. If you've seen some of my videos. Well, you, you would have been lucky to catch one of these videos, but, uh, but it's the church property that we do together. And we were talking about, uh, edging, right? Edging with either a stick edge or a blade edge, uh, versus a string trimmer. Now me personally, I switch, I go back and forth. Sometimes I use a blade and sometimes I use a string trimmer and I don't really have a whole lot of logic. Sometimes it's just because I feel like using a string trimmer or an edger. Sometimes it's like, I'm really doing a terrible job with the string trimmer. I'm just off my game and I just can't, I can't run a straight line. Uh, sometimes, uh, I just want a more consistent look because I think the blade get is more of a consistent job over and over again. Uh, but then again, I like, the way the string trimmer edges better. Like when it's done well, I like the way it looks better. I think it's cleaner. I think it does a better job, even though it might be just, just ever so, you know what I'm saying? But now the blade edger, I noticed that when I have a little bit of angle on my properties, like it goes down to a hill, you know, and you got kind of like a higher where the, where the dirt might be a little higher off the, uh, off the, the sidewalk or, or curb, whatever. When I come across, there's a little nut that keeps your blade on. You all know this. Well, something about the way that runs through the grass, it creates like this, like grass and then like this cut in and then back down. And I don't, I think it's because of that nut. I think it's because of however it runs through there. And I don't like the way that looks at all. And uh, what I started doing is I started edging now, Now, if this is the grass side, I would edge like this a little bit with an angle so as to give that nut a little bit of space to pass through. But then what happened is I didn't like the way that looked because it was kind of angled in a little bit. Oops, angled in a little bit. So then I came back and tried to correct it with my string trimmer, and that's proved to be kind of a difficult feat. But I, I am correcting that little gap because the grass is growing in there. So... Yeah, for me, I'm kind of 50 50 on how I'm feeling, but I'm always going to choose what I think looks best for any particular lawn and every lawn is different. So I, I flip flop. So let's see what you guys got to say about it. So uh, Joffrey, Joffrey votes for the string trimmer. Excellent. Then you got long kings. They're going stick edger all day. Okie dokie. 
uh, stick edger for Bermuda and uh, interesting stick edger for Bermuda, but trimmer for fescue. Why is that? Huh? Uh, Guth back on it with that only edger on new properties or overgrown. Yes, I agree with that. Especially if you can get one of those gator edger blades, those things are awesome for the overgrown ones. They really rip through, especially if you have a nice powerful uh, unit that you're using. Then you got uh, Jay and Christine say that they depends on how they feel. Always use a blade on the first time, uh, first time mow if possible for me. Yep. So we got a second on that. If it's a first time mow, you're going blade. I'm the same way. I am the same way. Now, sometimes I'll use both even on the first time because sometimes the blade doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't get, uh, what, what is it? I don't know if it's like the, I guess it's Dallas grass, but sometimes you get weeds along the edge and the blade for some reason, uh, doesn't, maybe my, maybe I don't have enough power on my unit mate. Cause if I'm using my two, two, five, it's not very good for that. Um, but if I'm using 20, 26, 20, uh, then it's probably gonna do a better job. But I know what you're saying, but sometimes I come back and I'm cleaning up a little bit more with the string trimmer because I think it does a little bit better job. Um, <laughs> yeah, Scott, I remember, this is actually a bad question for you because I remember we've talked about this before and nobody nobody edges up there. Man, that's actually, a, that's a big benefit because you can chew up some time around here on sidewalks. Uh, if you got miles, if, oh, that's another thing. If you got a ton of edging, I'm probably going to use that the, bl the blade uh, blade edger. Andrew, what's going on, buddy? Let's see what he says. He says driveway stick edger uh, in, around mulch beds and Bermuda grass. So is there any instance where you're not going to use a, a, a stick edger or is it pretty much just all the time? And uh, just that the runners are hard to hard to cut with a, a trimmer. Oh, here we go. Oh, that was right. Because uh, what he said before was uh, on Bermuda, he's going to use a blade edger and, and on fescue, he's going to use uh the trimmer so just that the runners are harder to cut with the trimmer and i think you're right because this definitely grows differently right because the bermuda crawls where the fescue no it doesn't crawl so i think you're right on that probably get a nice sweet edge on that on that fescue now down here in south in south okc uh, it's mostly bermuda and i got a couple backyards that have fescue but the backyards don't usually get edging yep <clears throat> I think I missed something there, but uh, Jay's calling me to call me the floor. It says pull pull the edger backwards works well, like Long King said. Yep, it does. I, I was on David Live. If you guys know David, uh, look up his channel. Uh, he hasn't been doing as much, but he puts out some pretty pretty funny videos at times. But David over at David Live, I went on his show once. And we talked about this, and it's true. If you run straight, um, going like one at one little bit of an angle going forward, then what I found is you can pick put it back this way and then pull it back and then it really chews some stuff up. That's absolutely true. It's, uh, a lot of times that's what happens on my, on my first timers when it's really tough. And uh, sometimes I wonder like, why don't I just go backwards anyway? Cause it really does a better job. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie. You said not very good with the trimmer. You know, I found that uh, with a number of guys, cause this is a popular topic. And if you guys know um, Top Notch, most people do know Top Notch, but he's up in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, huge, right? Huge subscriber base. And he's put out just a ton of videos. Uh, but he talked about this once, about why he uses a stick edger versus a trimmer. And that's what he said. He said, he said I just never could really get the hang of edging with a trimmer. And what would happen was, um, you know how when you edge, you do want a, a, just a narrow gap, right? Between whatever it is you're edging in the, in the edge of the grass. And that's what kind of gives the definition to the line. But what he said was happening is that, is that gap kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> so yeah, he was getting these huge gaps and, and not many people like that. Although I have seen some people that they're kind of proud of that, but I'm not a fan of that look either. So he stuck with the, with the blade edger just cause it's easier. And it's also to train easier to train employees. Uh, on a stick edger versus uh, with a trimmer. So I get that. It does take some time. But then you got some people, um, if you guys remember Greg Chisholm, Geek to Freak, never even owned a, a stick edger. He always used a trimmer and he used the uh, uh, FS70, the steel FS70, which is not a particularly powerful trimmer, uh, probably comparable to the two, uh, Echo 225. Might be a little bit more powerful. I, I don't know. I had a, an FC70 edger once. 
and it seemed to do pretty good. Uh, but yeah, he never even owned a blade edger, a stick edger. So he always used a trimmer. So there's a comfort level for sure. Um, here you go. Okie dokie says a new blade every single day, such a way. So, and that's true. You're right. It does help so much to have a brand new blade every time. Um, and something else I thought, because I noticed on my blades, um, because there's something about that square squareness to the blade versus like a sharp edge. I don't know why, but the, the square works better than when it gets worn down a little bit. And then it, you'd think it'd be sharpening it, but it's really kind of dulling it. But what I found is it kind of goes in like this. It's got kind of like this ax head pattern. So the back of the blade is actually more square. So try this. I haven't tried it yet, but maybe you would and see what you think about it. But just take the blade off and flip it over. I know if you're going to take it off, you might as well just put a new blade on there. I get it. But I wonder if we can get just a little bit more out if we just flip it over to the more square side that's not contacting the concrete quite so much and see if that helps. But you're right. New blade. I've thought about that. New blade every day. Uh, let's see here. Goose says, Zoysia lawns here and much harder to edge than compared to cool season grass. Yeah, Zoysia is another one of those that crawls, is it not? So it's got the the rhizomes. Uh, Rob says, I'm not very good either. And you know what? Uh, it's, it, it, it just makes sense it, to me uh, with a blade edger. There's nothing nothing wrong with it. Um, it's kind of the standard, you know, if you don't have a blade edger on, on your, on your trailer, that would just be very unlikely, you know, in our, so, uh, you know, there's really not a whole lot of need to get better at string trimming. Although I believe it's faster because you don't have to go back to the trailer to get another piece of equipment. I think it's faster. So you can knock some time off. And you might even be able to fit another property in that day just in the time that you save with going back to the truck, getting another piece of equipment. Uh, let's see here. Q-Blades. Oh, yeah. Here you go, Long Kings. You've been watching Blades of Grass, right? Oh, yeah. You just put it on. Q from Blades of Grass. You guys watch any of those videos? Super proud of Q, the way he the way he edges and, uh, and trims. Man, he is a beast. He is a beast. Pretty good. Uh, but that, you know what that is? That's kind of muscle memory, I think, because they do the same properties over and over like we do. And uh, yeah, they just knock it out. Yeah, man, give it a try. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'll probably try it this week, see what happens. Maybe we can save a little bit of money. But you know what? I bought a box of 50 of those things last year, and I'm still on that box. Uh, so because I'm part time, you know, um, I'm not putting a ton of hours on my equipment. Let's see here. See if I missed anything. I don't think I did. I don't think I did. So cool. Excellent. Good topic. Good topic. All right. Man, I tried the other day. It's a little faster. Yeah, it is a little faster. But remember, Rob, because I learned this from David's live too. Two minutes, right? Let's just say it takes you two minutes to go back to the trailer to get a piece of equipment to change out your piece of equipment, right? Well, let's just say you have uh, 10 lawns that day and you spend two minutes on each lawn. That's 20 minutes that you spent just going back to the truck, getting another piece of equipment. You could have maybe possibly made another 40 bucks, you know? So, I mean, I know that's kind of, it could be somewhat argumentative and so specific to what, you know, what your properties look like and things like that. But it, the, the logic, the math made sense to me. It's true. Like every minute matters uh, and, and habits, our processes are where we, you know, save those minutes. So if we have a good, efficient process, um, you know, then it actually increases our profitability, you know, because we're just a little bit on each property uh, uh, gives us more, uh, that much more margin in our schedule. Maybe, maybe it's not just getting another lawn, but maybe you just want to get home in time for dinner. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, you know, if you're, if you're one of those crews that's, that's, you know, doing 20 lawns a day or something like that. I mean, now you're at 40 minutes, you know, I mean, who would want to get off work, you know, 40 minutes earlier? I would. <laughs> Jay, Jay says Q can circumcise a gnat. <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> Let's see here. What we got here? I tried to edge with the trimmer in the, in the backyard. So yeah, 
Yeah, because that's particularly a long walk, isn't it? If you're going to go and get one. But for me, I don't do I don't do any edging in the backyard. It's all trimming. Um, and if I have like a back patio or something like that, I just I'm good. I feel confident enough with my trimmer that uh, that I'm not going to walk all the way back to the truck just for just for that little bit. So, OK, guys, so um, I'm going to move on from that that one um, to. Lyme disease. I know it sounds weird, right? But I'm going to share a little bit of what's going on in my life. Is uh, And I wish I could do pictures, but from what I can understand, I can't, unless I share a screen, but I can't figure it out just yet. I just, it takes me time to work through these technology things. But uh, my daughter came up with a rash today. And she went out with me on the job fertilizing the other day. And we don't know if that's where it happened or if it was on our camping trip. It could have very well been the camping trip is my guess. But on her arm, she got a little like dot and then she had this red ring, red ring around the dot. And we did some research on that. And we think it was a tick bite. And uh, what our concern was, was lying, you know, because it's one thing. I mean, I think we've all probably had ticks on us before. You just, you just pick it off. No big deal. You might have a little dot there where he was, might be a little, little sore right there, whatnot, but this rash, it had a circle around it. And from, from what I found out online is there's different stages of Lyme disease. And that was stage one. Um, so we got a little bit, a little bit scared about that. Not scared because, you know, but it was for people that don't have insurance. We're like, Oh my gosh, we're going to have to are we going to have to go to the doctor? You know, like, how are we going to do this? And, you know, then we did kind of get a little bit of fear about, it's like, well, Lyme disease, because it's, you got all that fear that surrounds Lyme disease because of, it can affect the nervous system. I say the nervous system, but the, uh, um, uh, your joints, you know, uh, pain, headaches, uh, fever. It's like, okay, if it is Lyme disease, then, uh, um, then how are that? So anyways, um, I just kind of want to talk about that because we, you know, ticks, what they do is they hang out on in trees and leaves and in the grass. And then basically they wait till somebody walks by and then they jump on the clothes and then you're, you become their host. They bite you. Um, and has, has anybody had a brush with, with tick bites, um, Lyme disease, anything like that? Um, because that seems to be one of the things that's hard to, you know, diagnosed from doctors because they call it that, that imitation disease, or I think that's what they call it, like the imitation disease, because the symptoms uh, overlap with a lot of things like MS and uh, rheumatoid arthritis, things like that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That was just something that's going on in the family and uh, thought, thought about you know, Lyme disease. Uh, for us guys that work out in nature, I thought you guys might have some input or some encouragement on that. My cousin got bit from a tick. Oh, really? And can no, no longer eat beef. Cause yeah, that was really our concern. By the way, welcome 365 lawns. Um, uh, that was one of our concerns because the, the long-term effects of Lyme disease, I mean, it's kind of like a chronic thing. So we just wanted to get a head start on it, a jump. So we took her to the urgent care and they said, no, we don't think it's a tick bite. Um, we think, you know, it's just an allergic reaction. So, um, you know, we get, we're doing the Benadryl thing and we're, and we're monitoring it close. However, I kind of do think it was a tick bite, you know, Andrew, you ever, ha uh, do you know anybody or have you had Lyme disease or was there any lasting effects that you know of? Here you go. Um, customer who had Lyme. I think the symptoms don't always come out until later on down the road. Yeah, that's what I was reading that it could be like six months down the road. So, you know, which is one of the reasons why it's hard to diagnose from what I understand is because the symptoms may come later, but there's nothing you can do about that. So that's kind of where we're at right now is like it, these things are not in our control, but there's nothing that we can really do about it except just kind of keep an eye on it type of thing. But, um, you know, sometimes you're just looking for some encouragement because it's easy for your mind to go places that aren't real yet, you know? So you want to just kind of stay grounded 
you know, about things like that and not, not kind of get all, all crazy about it. Uh, Oops, I think I'm doing the wrong, there we go, oh, yeah, I, I think they could, I think they could just um, prescribe antibiotics because it's a bacterial disease, so I think they would just prescribe antibiotics, and from what I understand is, is as long as it's treated early enough, it's, it can technically be cured, you know, um, so I think one of our goals is to just keep an eye on it. And um, we're thinking about doing a blood test because I guess they do, uh, they do bloods. And then what they do is they, uh, they watch it uh, and to see how it reacts to different antibodies. I guess I don't know if they introduce antibodies or if it's the antibodies. Maybe they're observing the antibodies, not the virus. But, um, but yeah, it's antibiotic. And, uh, but if it goes into the later stages, then things get really, really tricky. Andrew says, uh, the long-term effects of Lyme, it's true. Dad's friend has it. Yeah, I've got, we've got a, a friend as well, and I don't think they've ever actually nailed it down as, as Lyme disease, but it wasn't, I don't know if it was ever even ruled out, but I know it was considered. And, uh, but I think, I think they're going with rheumatoid arthritis, but that's the thing is because Lyme disease is supposedly like it imitates a lot of things. And that's one of the things that imitates is rheumatoid arthritis. So it, I, I'm, I'm not ruling out, not that I'm a doctor or much less her doctor, but, um, but that, uh, she, it could still be Lyme disease. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, it's common, but it's not common enough to where, you know, people are like, oh, you know, like they know how to deal with it. Right. Like, I, I don't know if I know anybody that knows how to deal with Lyme disease per se. Uh, so yeah. He's saying uh, doxycycline, cy cycline. That must be an antibiotic. Yep. And I was thinking too, because our family, because we're getting into this, uh, I don't know how to say this necessarily, but we're, we're really trying to uh, consider how the Old Testament of the Bible applies to us. And, and one of the aspects that the Israelites would do frequently is they would fast. And you guys hear a lot about intermittent fasting now. So it's becoming some fasting as a lifestyle is becoming something that um, is uh, uh, a lot of people are doing, you know, and there's a lot of health effects that like one of the things for cancer, like that's actually a treatment for cancer is fasting for extended periods of time because cancer doesn't survive um, in, in that environment. So um, I'm wondering, too. If uh, if maybe fasting is something that um, that would be helpful with that, um, but again, we're not necessarily dealing with it right now because we're not sure. But at the same time, you know, these are the things that are going through our mind, and it's crazy, right? Because it's like we get bitten by bugs all the time, right? Like all the time, you know, and uh, um. But then every once in a while, you know, or like the tendency is just kind of like sweep it under the rug a little bit and be like, ah, no big deal. I'll just monitor it. But, but at the same time, you want to kind of be prepared mentally. So this is really interesting. This is really interesting what you guys got to say. Lyme is hard to diagnose. Andrew, that's what Andrew says. And that's what I found on, online too. And with a couple of YouTube videos um, where they said, it's just, yeah, they go through all these testings and, and treatments. And, and uh, it seems like Lyme is not like the first choice of doctors for a lot of stuff. They go to all the other stuff. And I guess they just got to go through a chart. When I was a mechanic, we would have flow charts. You know, you'd start at one thing. Okay, check this. Is that good? Okay, then you go over here and check this. You know, okay, is that good? Is that bad? You know, is that, okay, you do this. So what doctors do, I think, is they go through that and they go with like the most likely possibly, and then they treat that. And if that doesn't work, then they go over here and then they start treating for that. And sometimes they're doing like both treatments at the same time. You know, so the stories that I've heard about is like the treatment for it, for that, you know, these symptoms that are consistent with Lyme disease are just kind of ridiculous. And that's, I guess that's just kind of where the fear is. It's like, we don't want to, we, we, we're praying that it doesn't go there. We're just going to pray that, that it just goes away and everything's cool, which we're believing that that's what's going to happen. Yeah, on that antibiotic, 
Yeah, I don't know how fasting works with antibiotics. I'm assuming fasting is one of those things you do when uh, when you're taking a break from treatment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. See, that's uh, uh, this comment. Goose, uh, Jeff, Joffrey's wife is a nurse, and she says, "Yep, that's a tick bite," and that's what I got on one of our Facebook groups that we're in. And the guy was like, no, he's like, that is a tick bite. Um, so we're kind of going forward with that. And that's one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up to you guys. Hey, William from Precision. Oh man, I see you're enjoying the AC. I, yeah, I am. I am. I'm inside. I got the kids to bed and my wife is, is out of the house uh, spending some time with her friends. So I got to stay in the house, uh, which is wonderful. I feel like a, a rewarded puppy. <laughs> I must have been a good boy. Yeah, yeah. I th we I think we are. I think what we're going to do is we're we're probably going to see if we can call that urgent care back and see if they'll just go ahead and order a, a blood test, and uh, we're just going to take that order to like an independent lab because they're cheaper usually, and then we're going to see what what comes up. Although uh, supposedly even the testing is like like a fifty fifty uh, on its accuracy. Isn't that kind of crazy? How these days how testing for illness is just unreliable <laughs> yeah yeah so cool well thank, thanks guys thanks for all the input on on the line uh that that was a uh, assuring is what i'll say because when we heard that it wasn't you know that the that the doctor didn't think it was a tick bite um we were like oh yay you know uh and now we're like ah, i think it is so so thanks for thanks for assuring assuring me uh, that we're not crazy parents, <laughs> but I'm sure everything's going to be fine. And as a matter of fact, the rash has already faded to almost nothing. So we're, we're kind of believing that that's, that's going to be the end of it. Uh, but we're going to be like watching her all the time, you know, like headaches, things like that. Mm. Coke zero. So good. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Coke, by the way. I just love Coke zero. Yeah. Yeah. A sign, a sign of lethargy. There, there's a lot of things. Um, I think they said joint pain, uh, headaches, fever, um, uh, the normal things for infection as well. Uh, like, uh, like, uh, warm to the touch, that type of stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Joffrey, man. That's actually, I, that, that's actually the thing that, that, uh, that I would probably ask for is, is a, just tons of prayer for protection over my family because, um, like I said, we, we don't have traditional insurance and, uh, fortunately we've read, we've, we've reached our household portion. So, so far we put out, uh, in addition to our, uh, to our monthly premiums, we put out, uh, $10,500 towards medical this year because my wife, because of my wife's broken arm. Uh, but I believe it's going to be a hundred percent after this now 100 percent is covered of anything that we do except for routine care uh so i don't know if this is going to be in the realm of routine care or not so but i'm hoping that that this is covered so um and things are expensive blood tests are expensive the last blood test we got was 800 dollars ow <laughs> and nothing was wrong 800 dollars for nothing so yeah Thank you. Thank you for prayers. That's going to be the most effective thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, it's, I mean, like how many different species of bugs out there are there out there? Have you guys ever come across that in the lawn where it's like never seen that bug before it's happened to me, you know, and then you get those pictures on Facebook or Instagram. You're like, Hey, who knows what this is? You know, you never know what you come in. And you never know. I mean, I'm assuming that that tick bites aren't the only ones that have a red ring around them, you know. So uh, who knows? Who knows? Right. And the only place that she was that she was that she was at was with me and one of my customers lawns while I was putting fertilizer down. Now, she could have gotten it from from the lake, but she didn't complain of bites or itching or anything like that until uh, the day I took her out with me to work. Too many insects to count. That's for sure. That's for sure. Okay. 
So we got we got 20 minutes left and I got I got a couple more things that I kind of want to talk about. Um, one of them is the beard. What do you guys think of the beard? I grow one every every winter, it seems like, and then I shave it in the summer. But uh, David was was on the live stream. David live. I'm talking about it again, but he was in the live stream and he told me he said he said. I should not shave until I get to a thousand subscribers. And I'm like, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a long time. Uh, Andrew says, grow it out. I don't know, man, because I got to a point because the way I work it is, is just when I feel like shaving, I shave and when I don't, then I don't. And I guess it just kind of goes with seasonal for me. Um, you know, but David said I, I should, I should vow not to shave until I get to a thousand subscribers and, and I'm somewhere around 680 something right now. So I got a long way to go. Like, like I've almost got a double, like my whole time YouTube and to get to a, a thousand. So that I might not, I might, I mean, I might get confused with the long commander. <laughs> I don't know. Joffrey, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad that he turned out that he turned out fine because because uh, it, it's a uh, it's just one of those question marks, right? It's just one of those question marks. It depends on when you catch it. So um, I think fortunately we get uh, more positive stories about recovery than we do uh, negative. So I'm I'm glad. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no shave November. Uh, that's, that's probable. I'd, I'd say that's probable to November, but I don't know what if it, I mean, if it gets too irritating and I mean, can I even live up to that or not? I don't know. I, I just don't know if I can wait that long. Cause I mean, it could be, I mean, I've been doing this YouTube gig thing for, I don't know, two or three years. Right. And, uh, so I'm not like growing like at a super rapid rate. So, uh, it just, could, it could just be a while and I'm not sure I can live up to it, but so I, I know I've got to vote for growing it out. Uh, looks like, uh, uh, what else we got here? Uh, okay. We're going back on the tick bite. <laughs> yeah. Gary said his son, son came home with the tick bite, slice of garlic clove and have kept it band-aid to the bite. The infection was, Oh, you know what? I've heard about that. I have heard about that because I, I had a coworker that that looked like he had an infection, and my boss said uh, chewing tobacco. He said you don't even have to chew it or nothing; you just have to like get it wet or something and then bandage it up. So there's something about chewing tobacco, and then he also said garlic. He used to do it with animals uh, on the farm that he that he that he grew up on, and uh, so yeah, natural natural thing. So now tonight I touched it, and it and it, it's been fading quite a bit. And it wasn't warm to the touch. So I don't think it's quite, I don't, it just doesn't feel like infection right now. So um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it doesn't come back. Like hopefully, because you know how that stuff goes, especially with kids. Like in the morning, you could wake up and it could be a totally different story. So, okay. <laughs> you guys crack me up. <laughs> I'm going to catch up here just a little bit. Uh, oh, rats. Uh, Grandpa grew his beard out so long so he could comb it over to comb his bald head. <laughs> You'd have to part it, right? You'd have to... <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, William. Yeah, and Okie Dokie says, I look like a 15-year-old boy without it. I know. I know. I know. It definitely makes me look younger, especially if I've had a beard for a while and then I shave. Boy, it looks strange then. Let me tell you. The first, because my son, I, now he was, he's just, he's, he's six now, right? But when I shaved for the summer this year, I guess I had my beard quite a while and uh, he couldn't stand it. Like he always calls it pokies. I, I'd hug on him and I, and I kiss on him. And he'd be like, eh, it's pokey, it's pokey. And then I'd shave it and he'd be like, I don't like it. <laughs> and that's why it's because I probably look like a 15 year old boy. 
and Jay hasn't Jay hasn't cut his hair. Hasn't haven't cut his hair since January, man. It's long. Ever since COVID hit, probably. Just didn't go back. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh man. What is oh, there we go. Andrew says, keep it trim till November, then grow it out. I don't know. I feel like I feel like it was kind of a challenge to just kind of keep it rolling right now, though, because I, that's normally what I would do. It I would actually just kind of trim it. I just trim it, and then it, and then when it got to, uh, it, it just always be at the the longest trimmer attachment that I had, because I'm not very good at like trimming a beard. So I mean, I'm not good with that. So I just use my trimmer. Uh, but I don't know. I feel like it's a challenge to give that a start now. Hmm. Goose says. Uh, for me, it's just beard from about November to March. Yeah, that's about like how I am too. The old winter months. Keep on hitting the wrong button. <laughs> oh, Rob, that's funny. That's funny. Okay. Does everybody know Rob, by the way? If not, then you should go check out his channel. Uh, but Rob is deficient up here. <laughs> so he said he's got to cut it. He's got to cut it and then put it on his head. It's natural. It's a natural remedy. Yep. It really is your own hair, Rob. You should do that. <laughs> you agree with Andrew that I should, I should just trim it? Maybe that's what I'll do. I don't know. Cause like I say, I have doubts about my, my, uh, um, my faithfulness to, to take on that challenge. Hey, but if you guys want me to take on that challenge, then then I might do it. But it looks like you guys are kind of like, eh, do the right thing, right? Let's see here. Yeah. You know what? Uh, the only person that doesn't like it is my mom. My mom's like, no, she doesn't like the beard. But that's just my mom. My mom's clean cut, right? Now, my wife, she likes the way it looks. She can't stand the way it feels. So she's kind of split on it, but she doesn't give me grief any which way. She just kind of lets me roll with it. But there's kind of a part of me that's like, maybe I should see how I can go with it. And, you know, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this topic, and uh, I don't know how I'm going to do it because i got to figure out how to get pictures to put up. But I kind of want to do a contest each week. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but but a contest each week, like for like, like the best beards of YouTube and then just go through different channels and then find all the guys that have awesome beards or maybe not so awesome beards, <laughs> maybe like the patchy kinds and, uh, and just like put them against each other and let you guys vote and see who's got the best beard. Like, uh, like one competition I was thinking of was, a, uh, um, like the juggernaut versus the mayor you guys know the mayor right ben from acme acme mowing acme mowing long hair acme mowing .com, uh against the juggernaut i think those are comparable beards who would you guys vote for between ben ben from acme and and the juggernaut from tulsa yep that's that's the word for beards by the way is pokey Joffrey says his wife call, calls his pokey too. Ben, there you are. I, I actually didn't know that you were in there. Did you know I was just talking about you? Totally behind your back because I didn't know you were here. I was talking about your beard. Stick edger all the way. <laughs> Dude. We talked about that like 40 minutes ago, man. <laughs> I know. I know you always use a stick edger. And, uh, uh, and I think that's smart. Uh, that is very, very smart. Because it's definitely the most consistent. Definitely. Because, I mean, you have bad days. At least I do. I got bad days on the string trimmer. And uh, when you know, I got a bad day on a string trimmer, it's a bad day on a string trimmer. And that's not how you want to, that's not how you want to roll it. Like that, that one week when I was talking about, I was like, I just had a bad week. And I was just jacking everything up. I was using string trimmer that week. So I was jacking everything up. Oh, I know. Uh, hold on here. See, I know what Ben will say. I know. I know what Ben will say. This he's going to tell me to grow it out. I couldn't. I wouldn't expect anything less from him. Uh, or if Karen's on here, 
I know Karen, Karen would be like, oh yeah. Cause she, 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 she mentioned it when I, when I did shave that she was sad to see it go. Yep. And Gary's going long commander. I hope so. I hope so, man. Uh, ben, ben had the right words on that. He called it epic once. He does have the most epic beard for sure. Let's see. Let's see here. Let's see here. Hmm. Yeah, beard oils. Beard, beard oils are amazing. They make you feel better. But my problem is I get too much. I get too much and then it's just like this. It looks like it's always wet or something. I don't know, but I, but it's kind of like I don't want to touch it anymore. Like it takes a little bit, so I gotta have just get the right balance in that, and you know, get it right. But I tend to get too much in there. <laughs> See now, now Joffrey thinks I should do the goatee or a Fu Manchu or a sweet mustache. You know, one time I, I grew out, I used to be into this and my wife used to think it was hilarious. I would grow it all out. And then when I got ready to shave it, um, each week I would shave a different part. So I just shave like a little bit, you know, and then, and then I'd have chops for like a week. Right. And then I'd end up with like, just like, a, like handlebars, which it was cause I got a coworker and he had handlebars too. So I, I his name is Dale and uh, I would call it the Dale. And uh, that was a lot of fun because I just, you never knew what you're going to get with me. And I just look silly at times too. So I would do that stuff. Okay. Uh, so Buford, Long Commander, Juggernaut, and Acme have good beards. They do. They all have great beards. You know, we've got some excellent beards in the long care. Uh, another one, another excellent beard that I was thinking of was, um, um, uh, why I'm drawing a blank on them, but Tennessee, I think he's from Tennessee, uh, runs Ferris mowers, Plemons, Richie Plemons. That guy's got a gray beard. Yep. Yep. But I think, I think it's time. I do think it's time that we start ranking these beards a little bit, you know, to keep us in line. <laughs> yeah. Ben, Ben's submitting to the juggernaut. But I don't know, Ben, your, your beard's pretty awesome, man. You kind of got this unique thing going on, you know, where, you know, you got like the, the long goatee and then, you know, the shorter on the sides. And I don't, I don't know that anybody else has that. So it, you got something very special going on there and I think it has value. So I don't think that you should, I, I think you're being humble about your beard, Ben. You're right. The juggernaut has a great beard, but I think, uh, I think you can give him a run. <laughs> and Ben says I should grow it out. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Uh, all right. Okay, guys. Huh. What else we got here? I did have another thing written down, but I've only got seven minutes, so... Uh, we're not going to have enough time to tackle the the last thing because it would uh you guys would want to talk about it and I do want to talk about it but I really got a limit to to an hour so any last words from anybody it's great to see everybody this week and and I really love that I see a lot of the same guys uh, each week I like to see the new guys too right I like to see people that show up for the first time I hope you guys are really enjoying it I really enjoy hanging out with you guys every Sunday for an hour I love it I mean I really really do um, but uh, but it's really neat to see the same you same guys uh, uh, over and over as well uh, it really means a lot to me your faithfulness and and to come and visit me so um, I'm glad that everybody is doing well. Thanks for the advice on the ticks. I'm not wrapping it up just yet. I'm just kind of like giving you guys some time to think about if you got anything else going on. Uh, Acme and long Care little guy could run a beer competition with different categories of beards. <laughs> different categories of beards. Yeah. I wonder what those categories would be because like, would you go with the short beard? Like, is that a category? Is um, 
like ZZ Top a category because Long Commander, I don't know anybody's got one like his. Like he would win that all the time. I don't know. I have to think about that. I might need I, I might need some consulting on that, Andrew, because uh, I don't know how to. I'm not I'm not 100 sure how to do that. Hmm. Categories of beards. I might have to Google that. Right? There's got to there's somebody's had to Google that before. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to Google that. And then maybe next week we'll talk more about beards. See what we come up with. Uh, let's hear. See, that's actually my, that's actually my last thing, except I'm serious. Five minutes is not enough time, not enough time, uh, not even close. And I might be over, you know, building this up too much, but, uh, but it was significant and it has, a couple of different topics involved in it. So I just, I just want to make sure if I start that conversation that I, that I can see that through. And I don't think five minutes is going to be enough time. So next week, next week, I'll tell you what, we'll start the show with that. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah. Whew. Oh, thank you, William. Thank you so much. Oh, I wrong button again. Uh, uh, yeah, we do get a lot of conversation, don't we? And and it's a it's easier for me to keep up with the comments. Um, so at least it feels like it, like I can kind of go down. You guys aren't like just like totally shotgunning me because we have like a hundred people in here. So yeah, I enjoy it too, and I'm glad you do too, William. Yeah, and okie dokie. I'm glad this time works out for you. There's there's. I, it, it conflicts with some other guys because uh, I know some guys, they, they cut their live stream and they'll come over here and then they'll hang out for a couple minutes and then they'll go on to another one. So um, I, I'm glad this is a good time for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got to be next week. I just want to make sure I can have have a good conversation about that so i don't like just drop something on you guys and then be like okay well see you next week <laughs> you know one, one topic just, just one topic uh just give us one topic your excitement like you want me to like give you a hint because we got three minutes i might be able to give you a hint Okay. Okay. This, I'm, I'm going to hint to you guys. Um, it combine, it combines three things, lawn care, my full-time job and coronavirus. It involves those, those three things. Does that tell you much? It could, possibly. <laughs> yeah, I think it will be interesting. And, and uh, it might be a little bit controversial as well um, because uh, mask, <laughs> um, it does not involve a mask. I'll say that. Rob's kind of got an inside scoop because I couldn't say it last week on the live stream um, uh, because I'm not sure what the rules are at work about the things that I was going to say. But uh, but me and Rob did a collaboration. I kind of spilled the beans with him uh, and, and I wanted to share it tonight. But yeah. <laughs> So cryptic. <laughs> is it cryptic? I don't know. I, I think if people thought about it enough, I think they could probably figure it out, except except there's actually another element in there that I could throw in there, but I'm not going to tell you guys. Not not today, because it's 10 o'clock, 
and it's time to wrap it up. <laughs> I got saved by the bell. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'm serious. It's a ton of fun. It is a ton of fun. It's a great release. Uh, the Sunday I kind of marks the end of my week. Uh, so I'm just thankful, thankful that I get to, to wrap it up with you guys and uh, appreciate you guys so much. So, Hey, if you guys do want me to get to a thousand subscribers, Hey, you guys know, know what helps. So just any way you want to help support, I appreciate you guys showing up. That means the world to me. Um, so please, uh, keep me in prayer. You know, I'm praying for you guys. Love yous. Have a great week. Make tons of money. All right, y'all. Peace.